Welcome to Kai's Hawks. I am Kai Ninja, and I am super pumped to get this episode started. Let's cut to the chase. Today, we're going to talk about the art of co-parenting. It's when parents work together to raise their child or children. And guess what? I have three amazing guests with me in the studio who are experts in co-parenting. I can say that because they're none other than my very own mom, Dad Thomas, and Dad JP. I am thrilled to have them here with me. So let's get ready to learn some awesome tips from the best of the best. There's this really cool quote from Heather Hatchler, who is an amazing author and speaker on parenting. Co-parenting is not a competition between two homes. It's a collaboration of parents doing what is best for their kids. Let me highlight that last part. A collaboration of parents doing what is best for their kids. So that's what we're talking about today. And who better to talk about this than my parents? What's up, everybody? Welcome to Caillou Talks. And I'm so excited about our special guest today, which is none other than my dad, Thomas, my dad, JP, and my mom. Great to have you guys. Thank Thanks you for, for having us. Having Thank us. you. This, <laughs> is, so, this is not even natural. Thanks you, for having us. Sure. You, no, seriously, there are no more people I would love to have on our, on our episode than, than you three guys. It is, this is very heartfelt and special to me, and I, am, I feel very happy that you are a part of the show. I'm very happy that you're part of my family, and I'm also more excited. You know what I'm also more excited about? What? What's that? You teaching me, you teaching me, and all of our viewers out there the art of co-parenting. All right, let's. It's a do great this. idea. It is an art. It is an art, but not the painting art. No. <laughs> no. No. Okay, so here's part one. Talk to me. Tell me your story. First, we'll start with mom. Tell me your story, mom. Okay. <laughs> do we have to start with mom? You have a very intriguing life. So please, yes. <laughs> oh. Okay. Do you want me to prefer if I start? No. <laughs> That's why I sat at the end of the table. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, okay. So um, my story within the context of co-parenting, right, starts with me marrying Dad Thomas and, um, you know, eventually um, us having you. And then us deciding to go separate ways Mm -hmm. and working through that. And, you know, that was a hard time for both him and I. You were little. It was between ages of like two and a half and three. And eventually I met Dad JP. And then we got married. But before that happened, I had to make sure that the way that I looked at my life, everything kind of revolved around you. So after you were born, everything was really like the focus of my life was you. Um, Dad Thomas and I were always so happy and thrilled to have you. Um, You were an adorable baby as you continue to be an adorable person. (laughs) It's getting squishy in here. I am getting second thoughts of this. I am getting too late. We're committed. <laughs> yeah, you crossed the line. You is, at, that's why is, I said, you sure you want me to go first? You know, you're you're out of orange juice, man. That's it. You're going to do this dry. Um, so, you know, we, we were just really focused on you throughout the process. So my story when it comes to this has more to do with choices that I had to make to really – you know, when I said, oh, I'm going to put my child first, not understanding the level of sacrifice and the things that I needed to do to actually make that a reality. And I think part of that was understanding that if I were to find a new partner, I needed to make sure that first I felt really comfortable with that person and I knew we had a future and then only then introduce you to that person. And then it was also really important for him to meet that Thomas so that um, we could all work together. So that was my part of it. But as you know, I wasn't born here in the U.S. I was born in Brazil. Um, I came here with my parents when I was only one year younger than you. I was around 10 when I came. So I've been living here in the U.S. for 30 years. Um, I grew up around Danbury. 
And I love living in Danbury. I love working in a community in Danbury and working with the immigrant community and the community in general. Um, it's really important to me that you are in touch with your um, Brazilian cultural side. Viva Brasil. Viva Brasil, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that you go to Brazil once a year to connect with that. And you've been doing that since you were um, little, since you were two, one and a half, two. Um, you've been going every year with me. And, um, you know, so for me, it's family is really important. My, my relationship with my parents, my relationship with my family, and I would make sure that you didn't miss out on any of that. Okay, so Dad, Thomas, okay. tell your story. <laughs> okay. I- um, so I guess if we pick up where, uh, where <laughs> your mom and I decided that we were going to no longer remain married together, um, a lot of things, we had to have a lot of talks about how do we make sure that any kind of personal things that we might, personal feelings that we might hold uh, don't impact our ability to be good parents in front of you. And that means learning to always, when people say putting your child first, the way we thought about it and the way we talked about it was that um, whatever my own personal insecurities or feelings or fears are, that I need to work on that separate and apart from uh, from my relationship with you as your dad and co-parenting with your mom. And that also meant that I had to accept that eventually someone like Dad JP was going to come into the picture. And I think that that was one of my biggest challenges was learning to not only be accepting but welcoming and to view um, your mom as a, a partner and teammate in raising you, but also accepting Dad JP as a partner and teammate and not view him as competition um, that I wanted to. And, and, and I remember the first day we met, we had to, it was a big deal. It was, it was a very big deal. I know it was, uh, it was nervous for me. I know it was nervous for him because, and uh, for and, me too. And, for, and for mom Thanks. as well, for everybody <laughs> that it was, it was, uh, we knew that there was a lot at stake here and what was at stake was you. Mm-hmm. And, and so, um, I think it was funny. Was it your mom? She she gave she said JP's okay and gave me the thumbs up. And that yeah. was kind of <laughs> that was kind of like it is when when Dona Dona Celia signed off on him. Yeah, that was I think that was that helped me um, see things for what was really truly important, mm-hmm. and that is making sure that I am a good teammate because we talk about Team Caillou. And we all have a role to play and we all bring different strengths um, to make sure that we are addressing all the needs and concerns that you have as a, as, a, as a young person. And also making sure that we're dealing with the autism side of things, too. Yes. You know, that's that was something that was we talked a lot about um, throughout and continue to talk about. It's continuing uh, to be a part of the process. Uh is that making sure that we're, you know, modeling good good behavior and setting a good example for you, but also making sure that you have access to all the care that you need, all the treatment that you need, and to help support things that you like doing, like this show. Yeah. Okay. How cop? Tell us your story. <laughs> what? What did you call? Cop. <laughs> tell us your story. <laughs> You want you want your blue cup to tell its story about co-parenting? He's like, I'm not sure that the cup's gonna have a lot to say. No, <laughs> come on. Okay, I'm sorry, Dad. JP, there's, tell us your story. There's no one left. It's got to be me. Yeah. So <laughs> I have I have a little more and history. Now I just got what he was trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Caillou. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> that's that's what Caillou refers to as a burn. Yeah. <laughs> He's he, got uh, roasted son. <laughs> yeah, that's what he likes to think. Um. That being said, I do, when it comes to co-parenting, I actually have an interesting history. My parents got divorced when I was 11 years old. So I was your age that you are now when my parents divorced. And if you had asked me when I was 10 years old, if your parents would ever get divorced, I would have said, absolutely not. Everything is perfect. 
My family's perfect. My parents are perfect. We're happy. We live in this great house. Unfortunately, life happens. And when they got divorced, when I was 11 years old, they really took an active role in co-parenting. So unlike most situations, I lived with my dad. So my dad kept the house and my mom would come over, come over and visit. And she'd visit all the time. I mean, every day. She'd be there every uh, day after work. She'd make dinner for the family. And honestly, looking back on it, it wasn't much different than it was before they got divorced. Looking back on it, I realized that what that taught me was there was two people, my mom and my dad, that did not want to be married anymore, but they wanted to be a part of the family. And it showed me unconsciously that they were able to get along together and take care of the kids, take care of the house for the benefit of me and my sister. So that was the first chapter of my co-parenting history. When I was, uh, I got married very young at 23. Your mom is not my first marriage. She's my second. Uh, so <laughs> when I got, when I got married at 23. Uh, I'm sorry. You didn't tell me this. You didn't tell me any of this. Well, listen, this is part of the show. You, yeah. you had a second, you had a first, you had another wife and mom. Okay, first of all. I'm going to get to that. Who else? Who is this person? I want to talk to her about. We're going to get to that. Hold on. But, Hold on. Okay. So, story is not over yet. Story <laughs> is not over yet. It is still <laughs> continuing. <laughs> so I got married at 23 years old. I was very young. And when I got married to my first wife, she had a four-year-old son. His name is Cody. And I was brought in as a stepdad and we all lived together and we had a, a relationship and Cody's dad was also a part of it. Wait, hold on. So that means I have a stepbrother? It's no, because a stepbrother would be someone who is brought into the marriage because of relationship, brought into the relationship because of marriage. So that means I have a brother? So he's kind of like your half brother. You've met you him before. You never told me this? You yeah. met Cody. You've met Cody. We yeah. saw him last week. Yeah, but you never told me I had a brother. You said that he was just a friend. No, no. no, no. You've met Cody, honey. He's 23 years old. Mm -hmm. He works at Home Depot. Then why didn't he give us a discount while I told Home Depot? Anyway, can I continue <laughs> my story? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so he was four years old. And we lived together and we had an arrangement similar to the way it works now where you go with Dad Thomas for visits and for days. And so we co-parented and the three of us, um, you know, my wife and Cody's dad and then Cody's dad's wife all worked together and we raised the children the best way we knew how. Same things that we normally do, taking care of dinner, cleaning the house, um, you know, playing sports, playing outside, doing Legos, video games, all the fun stuff and also the tough stuff like homework and all that kind of thing. So um, similar to the situation we've already heard, my wife at the time and I weren't getting along anymore. So we decided to divorce. And then unfortunately, a few months later, she passed away. So unfortunately, you can't talk to her. But that was something that we went through as a family unit, despite the fact that we were divorced and separated. But, you know, we as a family came together and, you know, processed that and, and dealt with that. Fast forward a few years later, I met your mom and we had some great conversations. We had some great talks, some of the most in-depth, long conversations about deep emotional stuff. And we all had things to share that were similar, but not exactly the same. And a few years later, you guys got engaged. And one, of the, and one of the most important things we talked about was you. And it was made very clear to me that her number one, number two, number three, and number four, number five priority was Caillou. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And I really, really appreciated that about her take on parenting. And one of the things that really drew me towards her was how great of a mom she was. 
Okay. And so, yes, we got married, and the rest is history. And and then Team Kaya was born. Yep, correct. You know, but I do have to say that, like— Is your number in draft pick? <laughs> that it was it was a process, Caillou, and all of us, right? Which is something that's really important for me to take away for life and understanding that all of us had individually gone through very hard things. But going through hard things doesn't define you in the sense that, oh, like this is so hard. My life is, you know, not good anymore because this hard thing happened. No, it's our responsibility to see what lessons we need to learn from that and, and move forward and do better. So I think that we all tried in our own way, you know, following the the line of your podcast, you know, it's not conventional. It's not the way that most people do it to work together like this. But we believe it should be because we were all better for it. But it was tough. It wasn't easy, um, you know, and now we're looking at it many, many years after, um, you know, but it was definitely an effort that we made as a first as individuals. And then we continue to make it together as a team. Okay. That's, these are all very wonderful and amazing stories. Some I have, I have not heard dad. I think you did. You just don't remember because you were introduced to Cody and you did connect with him, but you know, he, he is a grown up. Yes. You know, so he has his own life and, you know. As I was saying. Okay. Well. So Sharp segue. You have very, <laughs> as I was saying, you have very special and amazing stories that I that I find very intriguing. But the most important I need to know is that what lessons you have learned. This is a question that any of you will like to answer. Raise your hand if you would like to answer Can this I go question. first? Can I go first? Except that JP. Oh wow. my God! Why? Wow. Why? <laughs> he's never why? he's never gonna come back as a guest if you treat him like this. <laughs> but this is like their oh, banter he, at the house yeah. all the he time. He literally has no choice. So you when he gets home, everybody. when he gets home from work, what do you say to him? Pizza guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah, I, and sometimes I actually bring pizza. <laughs> it's like the pizza guy. <laughs> it's like guess who I am? The pizza guy. <laughs> and he was like, no, my dad, every time he was like, I'll never forget you. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the best. When I come home and, and Caillou yells, hey, who's home? Who's here? And I go, it's me. And he goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the morning, what do you say? What do you guys like, say? Bye, dad. I'll never forget you. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, that's real nice. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little thing we have. So I'm going to go ahead and share the lessons I've learned. No, throughout. that's how it's... <laughs> No, well, I'm doing. Yeah. Let me go first. Yeah, because of the history, right? I was okay, okay, I was a child yeah. of co-parenting. I did. I had a relationship of ten years of co-parenting, and now I'm in a relationship where I'm doing another series of co-parenting. It's so far, it's been seven years. I'm hoping it's going to be lots more. But I've learned experiences along the way, and the number one thing I've learned is that whatever needs. Whatever um, goals I have for myself is not as important as the overall goal of the child being the focus, or in some cases, the children, right? In this case, it's you. It's Caillou. Caillou's the focus. So every decision we make, everything that we decide to do, it's, okay, well, is this best for Caillou? And as Dad Thomas said, the autism plays a different part of it. That part is new to me. But I'm learning a lot. I've learned a lot. And we work together and collaborate together on things that are best for you, that is best for your growth and development. Because at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is to make you, Caillou, the best human you can be. Mm -hmm. And that is up to each one of us. And each one of us takes that role very seriously. And so we all need to have a maturity a wisdom and a selfless nature to say, okay, I may want to do this or I may want to do it this way, but that's not what's best for Caillou. And ultimately, if Caillou is the priority, then you're going to benefit from that. So, okay, then Thomas. Okay. No, actually, mom. Mom, okay. Mom has the big, our big mom's going to be the best lesson ever. 
<laughs> well, do you want to save her for last then? No, I want, yeah. no, I want to save her first. Oh, oh I'm already second, but yeah. it's okay. Second, whatever, let's do we'll, it. We'll okay. Fix it. We'll fix it in post. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. I think number one for me that was really important. I think that's with the most of the inspiration to try to focus on you was that there was a timing of your autism diagnosis and this transition that that Thomas and I were going through. And I was really worried that when you looked back in your life, you would think that your diagnosis has something to do mm -hmm. with it. And I never wanted you to think that you being autistic and us finding out between the ages three and four had anything to do with this choice that we've made. So I knew that I could say that or I could live it and show it. And I think that the only way to show it was to put aside, you know, my feelings about my relationship with Dad Thomas as a couple and really focus on our relationship as parents, which I knew then very clearly, especially because of diagnosis, was going to be longer than most, right? And it's a, it's a lifelong relationship, but we were going to have to work together in helping you um, in a much more intense way than parents of typical children. So I really have learned so much from you and from the experience of being your mother, um, that you've you've changed who I am as a person, you know. And I and I am grateful for all the challenges and blessings that you've brought into my life because I've really grown because of of you. A lot has also to do with what I've learned from my mom and how she's taught me to look at family as a number one responsibility of living in community and showing uh, selflessness and being living for other people. So I think, do you want to hold my hand? <laughs> I want you to hug me. <laughs> oh. oh, I love you too. Um, I, I've learned that life is a constant exercise of finding the right balance between loving ourselves, but also living for others. And I think this, um, this setup that we have teaches us to do that. You know, how do we make space for ourselves to exist as individuals, but how do we also live in a small community that we've created in our team, Caillou, our little family, um, in a way that we're constantly supporting each other and showing up for each other in different ways, but most importantly, sh showing up as our best selves for you so that you can, in turn, in the future, do that for your family, too, if you choose to have one. So, um, you know, I I see in Dad's JP story and Dad Thompson's story how the choices that we're going to make is really going to echo through time and it's going to have an impact in other generations. So it's so important to not think of just ourselves, but understand that our actions have a really big impact on others. Um, so it's a constant reminder of that, but I absolutely love, 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 love being your mom. It's okay. like 10 stars, not even five. Okay. Dad, last but not least. Okay. Um, I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned is that um, other people's happiness does not have to take away from mine. And that one of the things that I've, I'm very, like, I'm, like, I'm very grateful for Dad JP. Like, I'm very grateful that he is a part of our family. Because I know that he makes your mom, he's good to your mother, and he makes your mom very happy. And I want that for her. Even though that we decided to separate and no longer remain married to each other doesn't mean that I have to not want not be supportive of her happiness. And and I think once realizing that and accepting that, um, that was that really helped me um, be able to accept everyone and um, and view and kind of think of it as a way where um I don't know how to how to 
how to say this elegantly or not. Um, but that, like, I remember, I, I remember when <clears throat> we had the conversation when we were talking about separating and, gain, and, and getting a divorce. One of the things that was a big part of that conversation is we need to make sure that Caillou grows up not thinking that this was because of him, that our marriage was ended, that you weren't, we, it was my priority and your mom's priority that you never thought that our marriage came to an end because of you, because that wasn't the case. That had nothing, that was not the reason why. And, and I think that knowing that and carrying that with me and making that the, that, that allowed me to make you the focus of, you know, the, the, the sun around which my solar system revolves around, just as your mom and dad JP also have the same focus on you. So knowing that all of us were coming from the same place and that all of us were being supportive of each other's, you know, need to be happy and healthy, um, really helped enable me to be, to set aside any insecurities that I had so that I didn't view dad JP as a threat to my relationship with you because he's not. Right? There are things that Dad JP does that I've learned from him that make me a better father. There are things that your mom does that that I I see and I watch and I learn from her that make me a better father, better father. And and I think that when we work together as a team, um, you know, that like, you know, some of some of my happiest memories are the four of us going to places like Legoland. Yes. You know, like, a fun day. That you was know great. like, like whenever, like we do like, like my, and I know that you love doing this too, but when it's the four of us together, I feel like we are at our strongest, you know? And, and I feel like that we are, it, it allows me to be the best version of myself. And that's important because I, that's the person that I want you to see me behaving as, um, you know, and, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm very, very, I'm, there are so many things that I'm grateful for. You being chief amongst them, but being being in a co-parenting arrangement and set up and team like I have, I am very grateful for because there are a lot of, you know, kids out there whose parents aren't in that same place. And that can be a very tough situation to grow up in. And I'm and I'm glad that I have, you know, um, teammates and partners that I can work with who want to not only lift you up, but we lift each other up and have each other's backs too. Can I just add to that real quick? Because I think what he made was an excellent point. We all learn from each other. Mm -hmm. We all learn from each other. And an important part of this is not acting like you know everything. Because none of us know everything about being a parent every day. There's no way that's possible. And it's important to put that aside, have that humility to say, okay, Maybe something he's talking about, Dad Thomas is talking about, I can learn from. Maybe something mom is doing, I can learn from. And it goes the same way with others and say, you know what? What can I learn from this situation other than I'm right, I know it, I'm going to make a point. And the most important thing, at least for me, is that we learn from you. You've taught me a lot of things mm -hmm. about life, about being a father, about being a good person. You've taught me so much. So it's not just one way. It's not just we're co-parenting to you and it's one way. It is a lot of information coming the other way mm -hmm. from watching you grow up, turning into a, a tween, a teen as you get older. Oh, boy. You mm -hmm. have been blossoming into this human being that has taught me a lot about what it means to be a good parent. Yeah. There's no need to do uh, – well, there's no need to do part three because – out of all of this, I think I know how you make an impact. Make an impact of my life. Aw. No. Okay, let's bring it in, guys. I hope. Sure. We can't, we can't, we can't. Table. So here, virtual, yeah. bring okay. it in. Okay, but so, Dad, you hug Dad GP. Dad GP, you hug Mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's just don't go pack this way. We'll do a group hug. Right. I'll be the center. Yay. I'll be the center. Okay. All right. But, no, I think, so, obviously, yes, the way that we make an impact, number one, is making an impact on your life, right? But I think that, um, to Dad Thomas's point and Dad JP's point, 
we make an impact by publicly living this way. And what I mean by that is that we go out and make sure that at least once or twice a year, we have a big family outing that's just the four of us, right? Um, we post about it. People's reactions mm-hmm. every time we post about it is kind of one of the reasons why we chose to um, ask you to come on the show and talk about this because a lot of times people react very strongly mm-hmm. to um, our pictures together um, and us being inclusive of each other's families in a very positive way. Some people have a lot of questions, you know, but it's a way that we can share our experience and inspire others to go a little against the grain, like you say, um, and and do it our own way, you know? So last year when we took the day to go to New York mm-hmm. and we did the Natural History Museum, you know, um, the times in which sometimes, like, you know, if Dad Thomas gets sick and, you know, if I make chicken soup, like, you know, mm-hmm. we you go and you bring some chicken soup for Dad. Or most, most recently, unfortunately, we had, you know, the loss, our loss in the family. You know, we lost Grandma Jen, Dad JP's mom. And Dad Thomas and his dad came to the wake and supported us, you know, and made sure that you had what you needed during that time, especially during the service, so that I can— be with that JP and be a support to him. So, you know, Christmases, you know, Christmas dinner, mm-hmm. um, and to to have these experiences together um, is really important so that people can understand that it's possible. So I think that our impact is internal for our family, but also external so that other parents can understand that, um, you know, this wasn't a process, and I can't stress this enough, that didn't come out from, you know, extremely painful circumstances. Okay, so I equate a lot to childbirth. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes you have a lot of questions about how you're born and stuff like that. Um, It's childbirth is a painful process. But the reward is amazing. So I remember that it was very, very difficult. But then once they they gave me this baby Caillou, I was like, oh, my God. You know, like I forgot all the horrible stuff that happened. So I think that there was a, a process that was painful for everybody. But what we got, what we get out of it is it's beautiful. And it's, and it's really nice to see how it's been shaping you. You know, you have a little bit of each one of us. Mm-hmm. Um, in your personality, and it's clear to see, you know. What, what, wait, what was she do? I don't know, maybe a little bit of the snarkiness from that JP <clears throat> that could be toned down sometimes. And uh, <laughs> Sorry, Dad Thomas. From Dad Thomas, I think you have this, like, um, calm, strong nature to you. Like, you're calm, but you're very strong. Like, you have this, this like, very decisive way about yourself, but you're you're not... It's, it's a calm energy that comes with it. I've got one better. How many times during the week do you sound like a lawyer? Oh. <laughs> I mean, negotiating skills. Sometimes I'm thinking I'm at a union negotiation where I'm like, hey, Caillou, all right, we're going to do homework. We're going to do I this. I didn't mention that because I was focusing on positives. No, this is not. This is a positive. <laughs> it's a positive. Nah. And then Caillou was saying, Mm-mm. I have an offer for you. We're going to establish this, this, this. And I said, what, when did you become an attorney? Like everything is a negotiation, mm-hmm. but a negotiation in which Caillou is looking for a loophole. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's that's where the lawyer stuff really comes through because he goes, well, you did say this, yeah, yeah. but you mm-hmm. didn't specify <clears throat> this. So that means that I do get to play my video game for this X amount of hours, but you never said I couldn't play the specific game. So I'm going to play this game, even though this game is not something that you may be to. So it's a lot of that. And Yay. what I mean by that is that you're very sharp when it comes to that. You're very smart. And I think you do get that from Dad Thomas. And I think that is a skill. Whether oh, or not you become an attorney, you are going to use that skill in life. What about mom? Okay, Dad Thomas. So what, about, what, does he get, what do you get from me? Um, I think <laughs> you have... Caillou has a really strong sense of right and wrong and what is just and unjust. And schedules. And, and, and I, yeah, but I think that also too, like when you see something that, you know, in your heart is not right or something that you think is unfair or unjust, you have to say something about it. 
because you feel that obligated to and that you feel it's the right thing to do. And I think you get that from your mom because I think if there's anyone I'm a, who, And I'm a schedule nerd. Well, I think if there's any, I think that has, that has a lot to do with your, your autism. Mm-hmm. But I think in terms of your ability to see right from wrong and your strong sense of right and wrong and just and unjust and the need that you feel to say something about it is something that I see your mom do every day. Maybe. And your honesty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and your, your, your strong commitment you're to a terrible being liar. honest. Yes. To you're be- a terrible liar. Yes, I am. No, you're an awful liar. <clears throat> you're like one of the no, worst not. liars yeah, ever. That's a good thing to, that's to a good be thing. bad at. No, I'm not. You're yes, yes, you are. You're lying right now. That's why I was was putting, I was trying to put a positive spin on it too, right? You are a very honest person. And when you see someone being dishonest, you call Mm -hmm. them out on it immediately. Mm -hmm. Even if it's something that is very innocuous. Remember at home where you said, oh "Oh boy, oh boy. No, no, I did not use the, and I'm almost like, "Who, who also used the bathroom here? And then dad said, it wasn't me. And then I said, you're lying. You, I, I heard you choke. <laughs> oh, how about, okay, yeah. I'll give you one. How about when I said, hey, Kai, you should put deodorant on today. And he looked at me like, you know what, I'm going to apply some more. And I'm like, how about we just admit that you didn't apply any at all? Mm-hmm. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> that's, that's a lie. Can you see? Clearly, that's a lie. <laughs> it's okay. But here's the thing. Um, we are, you are the combination of all of our qualities um, and traits. And, um, you know, we, I think I would speak to the team to say that we have all striving to be, are striving to be better people so that you pick up on that. Because we're all imperfect people Mm -hmm. we're all flawed in different ways but we you we're very cognizant of how how we are shapes you so that puts us in the process of constantly trying to improve ourselves and be our best selves so that you learn from that so and this didn't happen overnight either no this took a long this took we've been at it for seven years Mm -hmm. seven years now yeah seven years when i joined team caillou and i would say like the midterms that we did recently. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. <clears throat> that was a great example <clears throat> how each of us have skills. Your dad was working with you on math. He was working with you on those word problems. He helped help you understand how they were. Mom was helping with some of the quizzes and tests and some of the midterms on Spanish and even some of the things on ELA, mm-hmm. on the English ones, right? Also we, the emotional coaching around it. I think that, that was, I was going to get to that. Yeah. <clears throat> I was working on some of the other social studies, the um, science. We came up with study guides. But mom was always there to come in and say, Caillou, let's get focused. Let's get prepared. Let's get. And then we started talking about some of the silly mistakes sometimes we make, right, that trip us up on the tests. And she took the lead on that. So each one of us had a part to play in the midterms. And that's just a small example of Mm -hmm. how it goes in everyday life. It's a analogy, if you will. (laughs) <laughs> oh no, midterm pot. Now it's time for the Bean Boozled Bash. What? See, here's how it works. Zach, please give me this stuff. You see, you you spin the reel, pick up a jelly bean that could either be a sweet sensation of a candy or a gross or a gross poison of a jelly bean. Mom says test. No, thank you. No, 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 you no. can put that please. back put there. That back. And now we're going to start with Dad Thomas. All right, Dad let Thomas. the bean boozle bash begin. Dad, Dad Thomas, let's go you're first. Up first. He spins the wheel. What do you get? I got. He has landed on. Birthday cake or dirty dishwasher? Dirty, dirty dishwasher, dishwasher or birthday dishwater. cake? Oh my goodness. Okay, All right, so, so grab this is one what of them. it looks like. Grab one. Oh, he, knows, he knows what it looks like. It's one of the it's little, the, it's the, little it's speckled the, ones. Yeah, it's a light white one with little sprinkles. <laughs> oh, this game never the gets sprinkles sold. are deceiving. This never, get, this never right. gets sold. Uh, yep. oh, make sure it's you not make, the... Get one. Excuse me. No, no, it, he's fine. We're this good. Looks like a sure? this looks, that is definitely it. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. If it's birthday cake, you'll know right away. Nope, that's that's dishwater. That is okay. sink water. That is, that is wow. Yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. I, I'm sorry. I was gonna bring water, but Dad 
say no. No, that's fine. I, We're tough. We can take this. Just sit with it, Thomas. Yeah. Just sit with it. You got this. I okay, mom, your turn. You. you can run no, to the break you. room and get what some mean, water. Why is it my turn? Because you no, you're right there. We're, we're, we haven't yeah. established you're any right sort there. of. No, you're Just an axle, man. Spit it. <laughs> 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 right. Oh, I dirty landed dishwasher on the, again. I, land, I landed on the same one, Caillou. Should I spin again to see if I get a different Spin again. All right. This one. Oh, strawberry or dead fish. Oh, that one's a classic. Oh, it's a classic. All right. All right, I'm hold gonna... on, hold on. Make sure it's the it's the opaque one. It's not the shiny one. Okay, I so know. it's that one. The shiny one is barf. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna go with. <laughs> Dad one. Thomas just discovered that yeah. he was saved because he cannot do dead fish. I can no. tell you that much. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> dead fish. Okay, is it dead fish? I will tell you. If you don't like fish. This is the wrong choice. Oh, yeah. Oh, we can smell it. I know. <laughs> um, I received the dead fish. Yep. Oh, and can I will you smell say, it? No, but I still taste dishwater. Oh. <laughs> I will say. <laughs> I, thought that we were, I thought we were uh, friends. Oh, God. I will. Uh, <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Get away from me. Get back in the frame. You know when you go into oh like. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, is, this is this is mom. You know go. when you go into a fish market, and you're like something is not right. That's what's happening in my mouth right now. Mine is cappuccino or liver and onions. Oh. <laughs> that was so yeah. And can I just oh, stop, point out? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you get cappuccino. Eat. I'm sure you do. Eat, 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 eat. I, liver and onions. Oh, oh, liver and onions are bad. No, you you I have think, to I go. Every, no. I think all of these. No, you sit. All of these are bad. There's no good ones in this. This is this is a setup. <laughs> this game is rigged. Yep. Or maybe we ate all the good ones. I don't. By we, do you mean you? Yeah, you. Yeah. Can I have toothpaste? No. No. Live all right, with your it. turn. Live with your decisions. Your turn, Caillou. Which one are you gonna get? I did birthday cake again. Yeah, get a different one. I heard stink bug is delicious. Liver and onions, man, do it. Yeah. That is your life. It. Yep. And you're gonna make your family <laughs> proud. Make, make your make your mom proud. I'm gonna get extra video game time. For Honor. This. What's funny no, is No, you're not that, doing anything. You just you're just gonna get bragging rights and that's what's, it. What's funny is if he gets cappuccino, it's still bad because he doesn't like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> does it taste funky or does it taste like coffee? That's not living on his face. That's coffee face. Yeah, coffee you face. got coffee. You got cappuccino. Okay. That one's going to come back to haunt us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after this we'd stop and get an espresso. <sighs> no, we got liver and onions. Oh, there you go. No, he, right. Yeah, now, he, now he's got it. Now he's got it. This is the part of the show where I give you my take. I am absolutely blessed to have three loving parents who make sacrifices and work hard every day to raise me to be a strong human being. Fendrick Douglas wrote this powerful statement. It is easier to build strong children than repair broken men. To me, this means that although co-parenting requires a lot of effort and hard work, it is totally worth it. It is much easier to shape a kind, respectful, and loving child by modeling the behavior, then to help an adult deal with his negative effects of growing up with an environment filled of, with fighting, arguments, and bad blood. If you are a parent, it is important that you always do your best for your kids. Put them first. Set your relationship stuff aside. And be who you want your kid to aspire to be. 